Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakai. This is Maury Madea Yahoo. I want to welcome you to another live stream of My Living Branch. We want to thank you for joining us. We want to first uh, thank Yahuwah for allowing us to be in the land of the living and to see another Shabbat. So wonderful it is. And just in case you was wondering, that was the latest song from the Sim Black called Scream. You can find the official video on YouTube. Not a bad song. Just figured I'd um, throw it out there in the introduction so that those that want to go check it out can check it out. So we want to say Shabbat Shalom to all our Maureen, um, Maureen uh, Yesharon and Maureen Kanan. I'm sure that Maureen um, Lamar to be, Lamar Yahoo will be showing up, and Maury Mikael, um, say Shabbat Shalom to you all. Praise the Father for your presence. Oh, yes, we're thankful, thankful, thankful. So <clears throat> today we're uh, going to go over some of the replies that we um that were posted on the website, um, livingbranch.app, those that replied. So I want you to check, you know, listen to those and see what people had to respond about their experience with the Ruach HaKadosh. And we'll do that at the end. But we're going to go over some of the Brit Hadashah and New Testament characteristics of the Ruach HaKadosh or the set-apart spirit. So hopefully you have experienced the power that the Ruach HaKadosh brings and how he moves and how it integrates into the communication system. And that's the main thing It's our connection it's, it's what's connecting us to the head. Okay, and our righteousness is like nitric oxide. It makes it flow so much better. So, um, we're thankful once again. Let's get on with the prayer and we're going to get started. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malach HaAlam. Father, we say Toda Rabbah for all of your goodness, for your mercy, your loving commitment that you've shown us. Nothing is beyond the span of your scope. Your hand is not shortened that you can't save. And I pray, Father, that you will continue through your Ruach HaKadosh to move upon your people, to inspire them. Father, to bring conviction, whatever's needed in each individual circumstance that you would provide it so that they would be able to navigate and get to where they need to be in you. Father, I say Torah Rabbah for the lesson today. Thank you, Father, for all the understanding that you give on this subject because we are but mere mortals and except you show us and give us revelation, then our knowledge comes to naught. But we thank you for the knowledge that you give and for your wisdom in the name of Mashiach, Yahushua, to the esteem of Yahuwah. Amen. All right, and let's see what we're working with today. So we're still dealing with accountability. We're on part 12, and we're dealing with Messiah and man, specifically still the Ruach HaKadosh. So we see this every lesson. I always like to encourage here to make sure that what you're doing, your efforts, your thoughts are grounded in the tree of life and not rooted in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because many think that they're with the tree of life, but they really over on the other side. So you've got to take accountability for where you're at. And make sure that the fruit you're producing, 
what you're growing in your life and what you're allowing to grow is of the tree of life. Okay, we'll read what we always read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. And I wish you to know that the head of every man is Messiah. The head of woman is the man. And the head of Messiah is Elohim. So we rapidly approaching the head of woman is the man. And I just hope we can take all that we have received over these first lessons that built the foundation for us for when we get to that part because it's for some it might be a hard pill to swallow but the only thing I can tell you is get you a big glass of water because this pill you need to get down if you're going to have peace if you're going to be in your who is order not my order see that's the whole point He's setting forth the order. He's showing, he showed us how the order goes and how we're supposed to carry it out. Okay, and we see here, we've talked about this, but this is just to reiterate, the connective piece between the head and the body and we've we've done it medically. We showed you the physiology of a man, that the circulatory system, uh, the circulatory central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system are key components to the communication between the head and the body. Those are necessary. If we found out in our studies that the Ruach Hokadesh and the Word of Elohim are the two key components that we need to have communication between the head and the body. So, you know, I'm, I'm making sure we reiterate this because this needs to be in your foundation so that you're connected and that you're not running around here without a head. And that if you have a head that you're properly connected. So I wanted to come back to here because this I think this is vital. Because when we talk about the Ruach and we see the Resh, the the Wa and the Chet, you know, what are we connecting together? We see we see there's a Right here, there is a head, okay, that's being connected, which that's what the valve or the Wa does. It joins or secures to something that's fenced in, a chamber, something that's protected. Well, was what houses all of this stuff? What 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 do you have? You have a body. And there's actually, um, you can find that you have something that's chambered. That's where the rib was taken from. It was a chamber, a protective place. When you look at your ribs, what are your ribs doing? They're, they're acting as a fence around all of your vital organs. And is there to protect them, to support them. So something to think about. Because you need the Ruach to be connected to the head, to connect the body to the head. Now, some try to, you know, downplay the Ruach. As, that's what we do. You know, that's what people like to do, but it's real. Now, let's look at some characteristics. Some of this could be repeat, but we, we sometimes we got to reiterate stuff. We got to go back over it because we need to have this down. Okay, the indwelling presence, 
Okay, think about this. Just like a person, you, you read in the, when you start reading in the, um, you, you see it some in, in the Tanakh, you especially see it in the Brit Hadashah, where there were different types of spirits that inhabited bodies. And those spirits, the body would take on the characteristic of that spirit. So if, if the spirit was a, a spirit of sickness or infirmity, guess what? The body was sick. <laughs> so you've got to make sure that the right spirit is indwelling in you. Now, he gave us a spirit from himself. The set apart spirit, the spirit of Elohim, the Ruach HaKadosh, to in to dwell in us. So let's look at this. The set apart spirit takes up residence within believers. Yahusha promised that the spirit would dwell in and among believers as a constant presence. So, you've got to, now, I want you to think about this. There was a man that's recorded in the good news that when Yahusha, the Messiah, asked him what was his name or the spirits that were in him, they said we are legion because we are what? Many. So if you're not careful, you can have multiple things that are indwelling in you or taking up residence. Okay. Now, why am I saying this? As a believer, you have to make sure that you stay and operate with the Ruach HaKadosh. Because if you leave the door open, other spirits will come in. What things can leave the door open? Now, this wasn't an intended path that I planned on going down. But as I begin to uh, ponder here, and I, I'm, I'm just saying, okay, Father, I see you're going a, a, a way that I hadn't planned. So I give way to where you want to go. So we have to be careful because there are things that we can do that open the door for something else to indwell in us besides the Ruach HaKadosh. Okay? Jealousy, envy, anger, all of these things, if not properly dealt with according to Torah, can open up a door for other spirits to indwell. And they'll start out because I've had it happen. I, I've asked, I, I've been in situations and I've, I've asked, did you hear something talking to you? These spirits, first they would talk to you. And wh why did they talk to you? They're trying to fuel, add fire to what will allow them a foothold in your life. Okay, so I'm hoping you're hearing this. So when you operate in a spirit of unforgiveness, if you operate in anger, if you operate in lust, if you operate um, in jealousy and envy, strife, you operate in those protocols, then you will find out you become susceptible to these spirits 
trying to operate in you. Now, if you operate in the word, word of Elohim, that magnifies the Ruach HaKodesh. Now, notice I didn't say if you read the word of Elohim, because I've seen many people read the word, but they don't operate in the word. So it's the operation in the word that causes the Ruach HaKodesh to flourish in your life when you operate in righteousness. But when you operate in the other things, the other type fruit that aren't of the fruit of the spirit, which we'll get to later, then it, uh, it opens an avenue for other spirits to try to influence and take up residence in you. Okay, so let's look here at St. John or John 14 verse 15. Oh, yes, pride is a big one. Pride is big. So if you love me, you shall guard my commandments. And I shall ask the father and he shall give you another helper. To stay with you forever, the spirit of the truth whom the world is unable to receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him, for he stays with you and shall be in you. So how do you get to know? Okay. Knowing implies a relationship. So, a relationship means that there is communication, there's integral knowledge, and a willingness to follow the word of Elohim. Okay, so let's go to Romans 8, starting at verse 6. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind of the spirit is enmity, excuse me, the mind of the flesh is enmity towards Elohim. For it does not subject itself to the Torah of Elohim, neither indeed is it able and those who are in the flesh are unable to please Elohim. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of Elohim dwells in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Messiah, this one is not his. So remember the correlation that we had? The word of Elohim and the rock Hokadesh working together for one purpose, connecting the head and the body. And that purpose is right to bring righteousness into you. Righteousness is when you guard his commands. If you live in the flesh, you're not guarding his commands. You're not keeping his statutes, precepts. But if you operate in the spirit then you are guarding his commands you are carrying out his word in righteousness this is all a part of accountability communication 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 is going back and forth. Okay, let's keep rocking. Okay, it's a teacher and a guide. The set apart spirit is the ultimate teacher and guide, leading believers into truth and helping them understand Elohim's word. Okay, 
Go to John 16, verse 12. And I still have many words to say to you, but you are not able to bear them now. But when he, but when he comes, the spirit of truth. Now notice it didn't just classify him just as a spirit. It didn't say when the spirit comes. But it says the spirit of the truth, the spirit of the truth, the one truth. Okay, you go back to Psalms 119. You can go in there. You know, what is what is true? Thy word is true. So it's talking about. This spirit is coming. It's going to. Bear witness to the truth. It's the spirit of the truth. And we know what the truth is. It's the word of Elohim. And he shall guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak from himself. Now, here's the the disconnect. Okay. And this is where you had to be careful. Not everyone that says they're uh, speaking for Elohim is actually speaking for him. But one thing you can rest assured when Mashiach talked about the the spirit of the truth speaking from him. He's only going to speak that which is from him. He's not going to make up possibilities and there's not going to be assumptions. It's going to be grounded in the word of Elohim. Everything that the spirit of the truth speaks It's going to be grounded there. So when you hear people and what they're saying is not grounded in the word of Elohim, you can you can chalk that up. They they list is some other spirit operating, whether it's their spirit or another spirit trying to speak through them. Because there is no contradiction between the spirit of the truth and the word of Elohim. Because Elohim is not the author of confusion. But whatever he hears, he shall speak. He shall announce to you what is to come. He shall esteem me. Up, oh, let's stop right there. Who is he esteeming? Mashiach. Now, if you start to listen, you, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes we need to listen more than we talk. If you start to listen, you will start to hear when people are esteeming themselves. When when they're, you know, trying to speak on behalf of, you know, what the father's saying. Well, I, 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 me, 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 my, 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 those words. But the true operation, he shall esteem me, for he shall take of what is mine and announce it to you. And all that the father has is mine. That is why I say that he takes from what is mine and announce it to you. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But It has been written, eyes has not seen, ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man what Elohim has prepared for those who love him. But Elohim has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all matters, even the depths of Elohim. For who among men knows the thought of a man except the spirit of the man that is in him? So also the thoughts of Elohim no one has known except the spirit of Elohim. And we have received not the spirit of the world. So this is letting you know there are other spirits out here you can receive. But the spirit that is from Elohim, 
in order to know what Elohim has favorably given us, which we also speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the set apart spirit teaches, comparing spiritual matters with spiritual matters. But the natural man does not receive the matters of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness to him. And he is unable to know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, when, when we start talking about spiritual matters, remember, Torah is what? Spiritual. <laughs> See, you, you've got you've to understand what Shaul or the Apostle Paul was, was saying. You know, we, we want to try to take out when we talk about spiritual we want to try to take out torah but torah is spiritual that's the foundation of being spiritual so if discernment how do we get our discernment how do we know how to judge right and wrong how do we know all these things? We know it through Torah. Yes, Torah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah for Torah. And after the fall feast days, we're going to, uh, the Father gave me, I won't call it a challenge, but we're going to have an activity to do after the fall feed, feast days after we settle from Feast of Tabernacles during the, uh, that season, the dark season or the rainy season, we're going to uh, have some activity to do that's, gonna, that's going to awaken us spiritually. And what is awakening us spiritually? Awaken us in Torah. That's what we're talking about. Praise Yah. Okay, now here's a big one. Conviction of sin. Now, there's a, there can be a tendency. The Ruach can convict you of sin, but you can continue to try to plead that you're innocent. <laughs> but if, if it's saying, you did it. You need to just go ahead and 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 identify, so that you can get it taken care of. The spirit convicts individuals of their need for salvation and of their sinfulness, leading them to repentance and faith in Messiah. Okay, what is sin? This is basic. You got to get this part. And I put it here in three different, from three different versions. First description in King James, then the Sefer. Everyone doing sin also does lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Okay, what is lawlessness? They have no governing um, rules of, uh, from the Father over their life. Nothing guiding them. They can just do what they want. So they're, they're without law. Okay. Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Okay. And then the see for who, whosoever commits sin transgresses also the Torah. For sin is transgression of the Torah. So let's read here in John 16 verse 8. And having come, this is what the Ruach does now, he shall convict the world concerning sin and concerning righteousness. What is righteousness? Guarding his commandments. And concerning judgment, what is judgment? How to, proper, how, how to properly execute concerning a matter of wrongdoing. We'll put it like that. When I say wrongdoing of someone breaking the law what's what's the punishment what's applicable you know do you have one witness 
which you got to have more than one witness. According to Torah, I see so, oh man. How many times I seen one person want to rise up against somebody and they ain't got no witnesses. It's just their word, but they, but they don't want to follow what the judgment of Torah says. It says in the mouth of two or three, they want, they want their one little voice to override Torah and there be a conviction. Not how it works. Okay, and concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. Concerning judgment, because the rulers of this world is judged. Okay, now, regeneration. This is, these are the thing, characteristics of the, the, the set-apart spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. What it does, what it can do in us. Regeneration and new birth. The set-apart spirit brings about spiritual rebirth. And what is it? Uh, making the believer new creation in Messiah. What does it say? You must be born from above. Okay, we'll read that. But when the kindness and the love of Elohim, our Savior, towards man appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his compassion, through the washing of rebirth, the renewal by the set-apart spirit, which he poured out on us richly through Yahusha Messiah, our Savior, that having been declared right by his favor, we shall become heirs according to the exception, uh, expectation of everlasting life. Now, does that mean you can continue in sin? What did Shaul tell us? Shall we, con shall we continue in sin that grace may abound or that mercy or favor may abound? Elohim forbid. Okay, let's look at, this is very familiar, John 3, starting at 1. And we'll read about Nicodemus. That's um, how we pronounce it today. We'll use the Hebrew. And there was a man of the, Philist the Pharisees, Nicodemus. What's his name? A ruler of Yahudim, ruler of Jews. There came to one Yahushua by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from Elohim, for no one is able to do these signs you do if Elohim is not with him. Yahushua answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he is unable to see the reign of Elohim. Nicodemus said to him, How is a man able to be born when he is old? Is he able to enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born to be born? And be born? Yahusha answered. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit. He is unable to enter into the reign of Elohim. That which is, has been born of the flesh is flesh, and that which has born, been born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you have to be born from above. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from. And where it goes, so is everyone who has been born of the Spirit. So you got to be born from above. I want you to think about the process. What happens when a baby is born? Okay, for that baby to be born, first it abides in a, a watery sack, 
a watery environment. That's that's where it is. Fully fully submerged under fully embryonic fluid is there, fully covering it. But when it comes through the birth canal and hits this air, what's the first thing it's got to do? It's got to take, it's got to start breathing. It's got to have a breath of life. And if it doesn't get that breath of life and start breathing and functioning, then it dies. Okay? You need immersion in water and immersion in the Ruach HaKadosh. Both of them. If you're going to properly, properly be born from above. This is the pattern that we see. That was laid out. People can fight it. People can go against it. But it's the pattern. You know, you'll see in the book of Acts where you'll have some that get the indwelling of the set-apart spirit and then get immersed or they get immersed first and then the set-apart spirit comes. So you see it both ways. The conclusion of the matter is you need both. Okay? Just like here, you need a central nervous system and peripheral nervous system for there to be communication between the head and the body. Okay? You need the Ruach and you need the Word. Okay? The Word comes saying that you need to be immersed. You see it all throughout. You know, uh, you see it, the washings for the priests. You see other examples. Um, when they went through the Red Sea, that was, in, that was a type of immersion. They were under a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. You know, you, you see all this laid out. Why you fight so hard? Why don't you just get it done so that he can start to do what he needs to do in your life? Some of us don't get what we need because we're so stubborn. We're hard-headed, hard-hearted. We want it to go our way. Unless we have it our way, and it comes the way we want it, we don't want it. Now, I remember when there was a stint, we were doing immersions all over the place. And I can remember, I believe it was in a, a January, we was up in Canada. Uh, well, I was up in Canada to do an do immersion. And um, it, was, it was snowing. <laughs> it was raining. It was sleeting. And I remember um, it was myself and uh, Yahoo Shine, and we uh, we were sitting in the sitting in my truck. And I told him, I said, I'm gonna go first, and you know, so when you come down to the water, we can just you know get it done. It was, I mean, it was freezing out there, and he was. Uh, I remember I got to the water and then. You no know, way! I believe I waited for him to come. He came down, and when he got in that water, that water was so cold. And he told me later, I almost changed my mind. But what caused him to want to get it done? It was an inborn desire to do the will of Elohim, to do what the pattern that set forth by Mashiach to be born of the water and of the spirit. And, you know, after it was all said and done, he was so glad he did it. In spite of all the obstacles. And trust me, cold water is a definite obstacle. Even though I had waders on, I could still feel that cold water. It was freezing, so I know he was freezing. So that's just an encouragement to you. Um, cause you might hear this video 
and it might be getting close, might be winter time. You know, if it's something that's in your heart to do, guess what? You'll do it in spite of all adversities and obstacles. Oh, yeah, Yahoo Sean said in the chat, it was cold, and he put a whole bunch of Ds. <laughs> yes, it was. But we got it done. And that's that's what we want, you know, people that want to get it done. All right. Let's see. Did I make sure I? Yep, we got it. Okay. We we went over this in a previous lesson, but it's it's just so powerful. Empowerment to witness. The Spirit empowers believers to be effective witnesses for Messiah, enabling them to share the good news with boldness and authority. Now, that does not mean that you pushing it on people that don't receive it. Okay, boldness and authority, you is, you're doing it with confidence. And if they don't receive it, you shake the dust from your feet, keep going. Okay, Acts chapter 1, verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Master, would you at this time restore the reign of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the set apart spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of you, Judah and Sharon and to the end of the earth. Okay, Matthew 18, verse 15. And if your brother sins against you, go and convict him between you and him alone. Now, let me stop right there. Okay, because we don't do this properly. Okay, if you now notice it says sin. Okay, we're not talking about somebody that says something you don't like. We're talking about sin. And I would take a firm stance that too often people are getting all bent out of shape over stuff that isn't sin, okay? I tell you I don't like your yellow shirt does not mean has no implications of sin. It's a comment about a shirt. Now, if I steal your wallet, that's sin. If I bear false witness against you, that's sin. In those cases, go and convict him. He didn't tell you to go and talk to everybody in the assembly, talk to every sister, talk to every brother. He said go and convict him. Between who? You and him alone. But most of, most of the time, everybody know what's going on. See, the witness part is you're doing it to try to gain your brother back. But most of us are not doing it for to gain our brother or sister back. We're doing it for our own gratification to make ourselves look good. We don't care about the soul. I wish I was talking to somebody. So between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But what? If he does not hear you, take with you one or two more. And by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word might be established. Okay, the reason, the reason I put this in here because we're talking about being witnesses and what the Ruach does. It empowers us to be witnesses. 
what was one of the things sin was one of the things it, it empowers you against okay but some of the stuff that comes up is definitely definitely not sin it's foolishness And if he refuses to hear them, say it to the assembly. And if he refuses even to hear the assembly, let him be to you like the nations and tax collectors. In other words, you don't have no fellowship with them. Okay, because, you know, I was having a very interesting conversation, you know, of how we engage with people say that sin. You know, if if someone has committed adultery, okay, what does Torah say? Torah says they're supposed to be stoned. So if we were living back where we had the open venue to pick up the rock and to toss the rock, there would be no welcoming them back into fellowship. The only thing they would be fellowshipping with would be a rock. They would be stoned, both of them. So we've got to, even nowadays, take more seriously how we engage in Torah and those that are f- those that uh, um, break Torah in the punishments. If they if the punishment was death, then you know, think about you, you still fellowshipping. They would be dead back in the day. Just something to think about. But we won't get nothing riled up today. Okay, Deuteronomy 19.15. One witness does not rise up against a man concerning any crookedness or any sin that he commits. That's right. Purge the count. One witness. And, and we have got to make sure we enforce, if it's just one witness that's trying to rise up concerning a crookedness or sin, we, we get, okay, you, Torah says you need to. But what we allow, we allow per, people with personalities to dictate to us Above what Torah says. Instead of just squashing, look, this is what Torah says. And if it was a sin, the the Mashiach said you go to that person. But see, people want to go straight to the assembly. That's not how it works. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses, a matter is established. Okay, fruit of the spirit. Okay, the set apart spirit produces the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, um, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control in the lives of believers. Okay, so let's look. But I listed the works of the flesh because you see in these work too, and you need to know what they are. And the works of the flesh are well known, which are these, adultery, whoring, uncleanliness, indecency, idolatry, drugs, sorcery, hatred, quarrels, jealousies, fits of rage, Selfish ambition, 
dissension, factions, envy, murder, drunkenness, wild parties, and the like, of which I forewarned you, even as I also said before, that those who practice such as these shall not inherit the reign of Elohim, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustworthiness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no Torah. What fruit is in you, inside of you? So in other words, you got a seed. That seed is going to produce fruit. A seed of a whoring is not going to produce uh, a uh, joy. <laughs> not in the sense that you think. <laughs> so we, we got we to gotta make sure that everything is correlating. Okay, that's what we want. Praise Yah. Okay, gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit imparts spiritual gifts to believers for the edification of the assembly, church, and the advancement of Elohim's kingdom. Now, one of the things that people fail is when we come over into this walk, we think that there's no more gifts, that the rock doesn't give gifts. All we do is just Look forward, look straight forward, and just continue to recite the word. But there are gifts of the Spirit, and is, the gifts are there for a reason. So let's read. And concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not wish you to be ignorant. See, he had, they had a problem with people being ignorant. We got a problem with people being ignorant. And then when people get gifts... They think their gifts overrule authority. No, that's not how it works. Okay, verse 2. You know that you were nations led away to dumb idols, even as you might be led. Therefore, if I make, make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of Elohim says uh, Yahusha is a cur is curse. And no one is able to say that Yahusha is master except by the set-apart spirit. And there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of services, but the same master. And there are different kinds of workings, but it is the same Elohim who is working all in all. And to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for profiting. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge according to the same spirit. To another, belief, belief by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, operations of powers, and to another, prophecy, and to another, discerning of spirits, to another, uh, to another, kinds of tongues, and to another, interpretation of tongues. But one in the same spirit working all these, distributing to each one individually as he intends. So, key there, as he intends was profitable for him, was going to bring esteem back to the head. You know, uh, sometimes people want, it, want gifts, but they want, it, they want certain gifts because it brings certain types of uh, esteem. So they want the esteem for themselves and not to reflect it back. To the head. Okay, Romans 12 and 6. 
They're having different gifts according to the favor which was given to us. Let us use them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of belief. If serving, see, serving is a gift. In the serving, he who is teaching and teaching, or he who encourages in the encouragement, or he who is sharing in sincerity, he who is leading in diligence, he who shows compassion joyously. Hmm. So notice that there's a certain way you need to carry yourself in those gifts. Look at people can share for the wrong reason. Because you can share not because you want to help the person, but because you want your name called. But it but you should do the sharing with sincerity. Because you care about who you're giving to. I hope that that rings a bell. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he himself gave some as emissaries, apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as shepherds and teachers for the perfecting of the set apart ones to the work of service to a building up of the body of Messiah until we all come to the unity of the belief and the knowledge of the son of Elohim to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the completeness of Messiah. So all these giftings, all these things are to bring us bring the body together to be built up to know who the head is to connect to the hands and remember who empowers us in these things would you say the Ruach and notice what he goes on and says in verse 14 so that we shall no longer be children tossed and bore about by every wind of teaching, by the trickery of men and the cunningness unto the craftiness of leading astray, but maintaining the truth and love. We grow up in all respects into him who is the head, Messiah from whom the whole body jointly joined and knitted together by what every joint supplies according to the works by which each part does its share causes growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. So remember, I keep going back what the Ruach is designed for. It connects, connects the body and the head. Intercession, and I'm sure you remember this one from the other uh, couple weeks back. Help in prayer. The set-apart spirit helps believers in their prayers, interceding on their behalf and enabling them to to communicate with Elohim. Okay. In the same way, the spirit does help in our weakness. And we are Romans 8, 26. For we do not know what we should pray, but the spirit himself pleads our case. Remember, the spirit is the conduit between the head and the body and the body and the head. For us with groanings unutterable. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the set apart ones according to Elohim. And we know that all 
matters work together for the good to those who love Elohim, to those who are called according to his purpose. All righty. So I wanted to just go over. We, we got a few more minutes. But I wanted to go over just some of the, um, what is your experience with the set-apart spirit, the Rock Hokadesh? This is for the upcoming lesson. This is what I put on the website. Um, the Living Branch dot app. Okay, I'm not going to read the the name of the person, but I'm gonna just read what they said. Got some advice in the evening to eat only vegetables. Today, yogurt for the evening. Felt empowered the last few days. I gave Ab Yahu a praise and esteem. Now, how does that relate to their experience? Um, well. I remember um, when I used to have to speak often in front of audiences. I remember one time that, I mean, I, I just, I ate a whole lot. And when I got up to speak, it was like I struggled. So what I started doing, whenever I had to speak, I would not eat. I would not eat at all. And it seemed to put me in better tune with what to say because it was a spiritual environment. And that just worked great for me. So just in, in my piece of advice, you know, if you're teaching or you have uh, to speak in front of an audience spiritually, you know, limit your eating because food will weigh you down. Just just my advice from, from experience. Finally meditated without having a million thoughts running through my head. The experience felt great. The Ruach felt like it grew and I felt different after I opened my eyes. The connection with the head and the father are definitely through the set apart spirit. So this, this um, someone reached out to me, wanted to, we kind of went over about meditating and different things and what they were searching for, they found it because they were seeking for it. Okay, when I feel heavy sometimes, sometimes heavy in my Ruach, I ask a moray for wisdom and guidance in the matter. They tell me to go before the Father in prayer. They ask Abi Hood to prepare me for what is to come and to show me. I also ask him to give me wisdom, strength, guidance for what, what's to come. Afterwards, I feel such a relief off my Ruach, a likeness. Then Abi Hood shows me in a dream or in reality what the heaviness meant. So, your your ruach can can feel heavy, and going to prayer. Remember, we talked about the intercession that that you can't even utter that it can make intercession for you, the ruach hokadesh. So, it's it's a good idea when when you, when you're feeling down, when you're feeling loud, figure out what kind of spirit you're dealing with. You know what's What's weighting you down? And you often can do that in prayer. Now, Maury Kathan just reiterates um, what, what I said. He says, I usually fast on days I teach. It definitely clears your thoughts. Oh, yes. Trust me, it does. I've been in the opposite direction. <laughs> Ooh, I was like, I'd never do that again. Eat a heavy meal and then have to teach. Okay, generally speaking, I believe that the Ruach Hokadesh is leading and guiding me 
to all truth and comforting me through the process. I believe I have experienced the Ruach Hokadesh by way of voice through others or to me, dreams, interpretation of others and myself in prayer, uh, intercession for others and myself in prayer, conviction, confirmation, bringing Bible verses to remembrance and life lessons through doing work outside or in the home. There are many ways I believe the Ruach can commune with us and we with it. But the key is that it is that it is aligned with the Father's word. It's our helper and comforter. It's motivating us and guiding us to fulfill the Father's purpose according to his word. Okay, um, Okoti yeah. Yakarius uh, said, hallelujah. I only drink water before praise. I don't eat until afterwards. Food will weigh you down indeed. Hallelujah. See, another witness. Another witness. And that that's in the chat, just in case you wonder why I said, said her name. Okay, the um, just a few more. The set apart spirit showed me where I was playing games in the areas I didn't want to deal with. Showing me where I was lacking and slacking. So I decided to clean out that closet, i.e. junk drawers in my life. As I did the right things to clean up those areas, and still cleaning the set apart spirit directs directions in my life were more audible. The directions were always clear, and I was just not on the right frequency in my heart. Okay. So you've you've definitely, you know, when when the spirit is the ruach is convicting you, you definitely have to. Follow his lead. If you if you don't, it gets harder. Life gets harder. Okay, um, I started questioning things I was taught in church. I remember being around 13 years old, asking my mom why we did things differently than what the father's word said. She would get upset when I pointed different things out. From then on, I started reading and praying for knowledge and understanding of his truth and only his truth. The set apart spirit led me to the truth about the holidays, uh, the nation's celebration, celebrate. Then the set apart spirit guided me to my living branch to understand the importance of his feast days, his Torah and his name. Hallelujah. Okay, Shalom family, I see the hand of Yahuwah working daily in manifestations, how he leads my eyes or ears, what someone says or does. Okay, then one last one. My experience in feeling Yahuwah's Ruach represents my body, my voice, my head, my mind and soul filling up and the anointing of my hands and feet. I can feel these things while in Yahuwah's presence or while operating in my spiritual gifts and at times when talking or being comforted by Yahuwah. I can feel the set apart Ruach Baruch the word that I get, that I speak, giving me direction and correction. When I go to give a message to a person, I can feel the words who wants me to speak and nothing of my flesh. I can feel the rock hokadesh consuming my flesh, removing pride, creating humility to allow me to be in the presence of Yahuwah 
in order for my praise and my prayer to be acceptable in his presence. I can I can envision myself at the throne of his feet, bowing low in submission, virtuously, righteously, as the Ruach Kokodesh flows through my body. Hallelujah. And we we all want to have experiences that impact us with so that we are familiar and know how the rock leads and how his anointing flows. <laughs> Here's a good quote that's in the chat. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of Elohim, then the reign of Elohim has come upon you. That's in Matthew or Matthew Yahoo 12, 28. So we definitely want to have a empowering experience with the presence of the Ruach. So, we're going to pray, and we're going to ask the Father, those that are, are continue to reaching out to him, that he would see you, see your faith, see your perseverance, and reward you accordingly. Father, I pray in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, that, that those are, though, there are those that are pressing hard towards you. They're pulling on your z the zizits. They're pulling on the righteousness that you carry before you. I ask you, Father, that you see them. They humble themselves. Their action confirms their conviction. And I pray, Father, that you would grant them an experience with you like never before. Father, a spirit that they can hold on to and remember in the tough times. They can remember when there's no water in the land to drink and they're thirsty. But they can remember that, that they drunk from a well that they didn't have to pay from. And the water sprung up into everlasting life. Father, I pray that you give them that experience with you. Be there pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. I thank you for the experience. I thank you for the testimonies that shall come forth because as we move into this new arena, into this new time slot, this new time that we're moving in where the wicked seem like they are just moving their agenda faster and faster. We need your Ruach to discern. We need your Ruach to convict. We need it to guide. We need it to lead us, to inspire us, to encourage us, to do all the things so that we can persevere in this last and evil day. I thank you, Father, for you the lift of our heads. Thank you for giving our sins, transgressions, and iniquities. Thank you for helping us to recognize the areas we need to adjust, the areas that we need to grow in, the areas that you're trying to nurture and we need to stop resisting your nurture. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Let your presence be with us. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Those were some wonderful, wonderful ex experiences and testimonies. And if, if you had one you wanted to get in, just go ahead and, you know, uh, put it over the web on the website, you know, because I go through and look. And you'll find the headings. They're not that hard to find. So we do have our email back. 
info at mylivingbranch.org is back up and running. We are still working on the website. Um, it's uh, it's um, how could you say? It's not an overnight thing. So if you do go through the website, it is up and running, but we're still working on it. So we have much more stuff that's coming. A um, lot of things in the pipeline. <laughs> All righty. If you want to join the bookmarker witnessing team, remember he gave you power to be a what? A witness. We're little by little. We're we're revamping things. The check out the witnessing website. Yahuwah.army. is still available. Um, we those that go to Yahuwah.co. Those. That's going over to Yahuwah.army. Yahuwah.army is going to become our official bookmarker witnessing site. And don't worry, there's going to be coming a revamp to the bookmarker in the coming months. Because we're going to line all this up. But first, we got to give out the bookmarkers that we have. So if you haven't become a part, get on board. We're waiting on you. All right, if you Passover be here before you know it, so you can get your Hebrew Passover story for your children. Just another tool to teach and train our children. So make sure you check it out. You can go to go to Amazon and get it. It's it's rate is it's um it's on the it's on the website at Amazon. Just put in the name, you'll find it. All righty, so thank you for your support. If you want to join us, join our family, you go over to living dot, livingbranch.app, fill out the thing, and welcome you to the website. You know, we're family there. So if you have the family type who you're doing it with the father, open you welcome arms. First support, hey, send your prayers up. Continue to pray. Like I said, we're going to have something coming up in after the feast days are over to keep us moving, keep us engaged. If you would like to support us, you can support us in Cash App. You can support us in PayPal. Um, there's actually a donation button right in the live stream. If you would like, you know, the Father put it on your heart to do, hey, and do it. Want to thank you for joining. Appreciate you. Um, this was definitely a. Um, we'll see what we what we do next week. Um, I'm, you know, we might be. I think we're about ready to um, move on to our next uh, section, which is going to definitely be interesting for a lot so if you are ready when we move there we're gonna move and we're gonna move by his power we're not gonna we're not gonna shuck and drive with it we're gonna just give it to it give it give it to you like it is all right miss baka want to thank you for joining us and Pray that you have a wonderful Shabbat day. This is Maury Medea Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom, and let's make this the best Shabbat ever. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakah. <laughs>